In these videos, I'm going to be going through math, physics, and engineering practice problems. If you need help with any of your courses or you want access to extra practice problems, check out my website linked below. Today, we're going to take a look at linear thermal expansion. So let's start with a picture here so we can see what this looks like. We've got a cold object, and let's say we measure that length, so we have an initial length of our object. Now, if we heat it up, what we'll notice is that when the object is hot, it's going to be slightly bigger. So now with our hot object, we've got LF, that's going to be the final length of our object, and then delta L, that'll be that small change in length. And I just want to point out here that that change in length is going to be very tiny, and we'll see that when we do an example here. Now let's see how we can calculate that change in length. The equation we have is delta L is equal to LI times alpha times the difference in temperature. So delta L, we said that's going to be our change in length. LI is going to be the initial length of that object. Alpha is going to be the coefficient of thermal expansion. And so that's going to be a material property. So for copper or steel or aluminum, they're all going to have different values for alpha. And we're going to say that value is going to be something that we would just pull out of a table. In some courses, they'll just give you that value as part of the question. And then TF is going to be the final temperature, and TI is going to be the initial temperature. So what this equation allows us to do is it allows us to say, okay, if we have an object which is changing temperature, and we know what the initial length of it is, and we know what material it is, then we can use this equation, we can figure out how much that length is changing. Now let's take a look at an example to see how we can use this equation. So we have a section of pipe which carries hot water through a house it is shown in the diagram here. So the yellow piece here is the pipe and then the white is going to be the studs and the floorboard. So the dimension labeled Y is 126 centimeters long and the dimension labeled X is 24 centimeters long. The pipe is fixed to the stud and the floorboard so it can't move there at all. And then it says when no water is flowing through the pipe, its temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So roughly room temperature here. And then when hot water is flowing through the pipe, its temperature is raised to 48 degrees Celsius. Take the coefficient of thermal expansion of the copper pipe to be 17 times 10 to the negative 6. And the units for that are 1 over Kelvin or 1 over degrees Celsius. So since we're working with change in temperature here, that unit could either be 1 over Kelvin or 1 over degrees Celsius. Now what they want us to do is to find the magnitude and direction of the displacement of the pipe elbow due to the change in temperature when hot water is flowing. So basically what they're saying is that when this copper pipe is at 20 degrees Celsius, it's just going to take that perfect L shape. But when it's heated up to 48 degrees Celsius, that Y dimension is going to get a little bigger, and then the X dimension is going to get a little bigger as well. So if we can use the equation we had before to calculate the change in X and the change in Y, then we can figure out what the magnitude and direction of the displacement is. So let's start with our equation. Change in length is equal to initial length alpha change in temperature. And we can just replace that change in length with change in X and initial length with X that we have on the diagram. So if we plug in our numbers for that, we'll get the initial length as 24 centimeters, alpha as 17 times 10 to the negative 6, 1 over Kelvin. And our change in temperature here, we're starting at 20 degrees and we're ending at 48. So that'll be 48 minus 20. And if we plug that all in, we get that the change in X is 0.01142 centimeters. So it really is a tiny number here that we get for that. Now let's do the same thing for the y direction. We can say the change in y is going to be the initial y times alpha times our change in temperature. So we have 124 centimeters as the initial value for y. Alpha is 17 times 10 to the negative 6, 1 over Kelvin. And again, our change in temperature is going to be 48 minus 20. So when we plug that in, we get the change in y is going to be 0 0.05998 centimeters. Now we can draw a little diagram here so we can picture what's happening. Um, the change in X was pretty small, but the change in Y was a lot bigger. So we can use our diagram here to calculate our displacement. So I've just labeled that D as the hypotenuse of that triangle. So we can calculate that by saying delta X squared plus delta Y squared. That's going to get us our magnitude of our displacement. So if we plug in those values, delta X as 0.0. 1142 centimeters and delta y as 0 0.05998 centimeters 
then we'll get that the magnitude of the displacement is going to be 0 0.0611 centimeters. Now we can use our triangle again to figure out what that angle is going to be. We'll have that the angle is going to be inverse tan of the opposite over adjacent, so that'll be inverse tan of delta y over delta x. And we plug those numbers in and we get that angle as 79.2 degrees. Just some things to keep in mind here. If we are increasing in temperature, then that change in length is going to be positive. So our object will be getting bigger as it's getting heated. If our temperature is going down or we're taking heat out of the object, then we'll get a negative value for our change in length. And all of that means is that our object is getting smaller because it's getting colder. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll answer those as soon as I can.